Good morning, scientists. This is Miss Cordova. I teach second grade at Vielands Elementary. And today I'm gonna to take you outside and we're going to look around and see what signs uh, that we see around our outdoor spaces that tell us it is spring. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I did bring a notebook because I do wanna record some information today. And today um, I'm gonna to start by writing to date, the date, which is March 20th, 2020. And the time that I'm going outside today is 7.35. And I just um, used my smartphone to check the temperature because I don't have a thermometer today. My thermometer is in the classroom, but I do know that it is 40 degrees, which is pretty cold. So let's go see what we notice. So I can already tell that just by looking at the grass, we can see that there is some grass that's really dewy, but also over here, some grass is really frozen. So I'm already kind of starting to wonder what happens overnight that makes the grass freeze over even though yesterday was the first day of spring. So I already have that question of, well, why is it that some grass stays frozen in the morning and some starts to melt? So I might start to think about that as I do my investigations throughout the day. The other thing I'm starting to notice now that it is spring is I do hear a lot of birds in the morning and I hear them at a, a little bit of a different time than when I used to get up and get ready for school. And I see a really, really cool sign of spring, everybody, and that is this big, big cherry blossom tree. And if you look at it, it's really tall and it has these really beautiful pink blossoms. So I'm gonna really gently pick a really small one off and look at it a little bit closer. So if we look at this blossom really, really closely, we can see inside that we have these little bits of pollen. So I have all kinds of questions about that, which is, I know that bees and butterflies and other pollinators probably um, will be visiting this plant soon. I'm already really curious um, how they collect the pollen, what they do with the pollen, and um, what does it mean when different pollen and different flowers are different colors? So I am going to hold on to that because I have some other blossoms that I want to look at today. So I noticed that tree was the first tree in our garden that bloomed, but I know there are some other trees that haven't bloomed yet and that are a little bit behind. This is one of my favorite trees because it reminds me of, of the tree that was at my parents' garden when I was a little girl. So if you zoom in really closely, you'll notice some have bloomed and some are still buds. So when I look at the ones that have bloomed and I compare it to what, oops, to what I have before, you'll see that this one on the inside is kind of um, a brownish color maybe. And the pollen in here is yellow so i'm already wondering what that means and then of course the leaves are different colors the petals i mean the petals are very different colors here and then i'm also curious this seems a lot later well actually i don't know because look i see some buds that haven't opened and then i see buds like this that are already starting to die so i have all kinds of questions and i'm going to keep coming back to this tree maybe on some other days to see if i can figure that out so over here, I know a lot of us who live in Seattle have rhododendron around our yard. And the rhododendron is actually the Washington state flower. And the rhododendrons are sometimes they're really tall like this, sometimes they're a lot lower to the ground. And the rhododendrons in my neighborhood are just starting to create these little buds. And I'm starting to wonder already, what color will these buds be when they bloom? I'm also wondering what kind of pollinators or maybe even some hummingbirds might be visiting them. Oh, there's my neighbor and their dog going on a walk for the morning. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show you was something that my second graders noticed last week. I'm gonna go try to find there are these little plants that have these beautiful purple flowers. I'm gonna go look for those. And if you've seen these before, and at our school, we called them bluebells. I'm not sure if that's what they're called, but I'm gonna go look for them. Over here. Hmm. Also seeing if there's any other signs of spring that I noticed. Get really quiet, you can hear all the birds. Oh, 
colored sun. Let's see what these look like. So again, if, if you're going to pick a part of a plant for some science investigation, just get really close and pick it really gently so you don't disturb any of the other plants. So this is different than the flower that my second graders were looking at, but these are really low to the ground. So I'm also starting to think about when blossoms are lower to the ground, what kind of animals might be visiting those blossoms. And I also noticed that these are such a different color compared to the ones that I got before. And when I look closely, the way that the pollen looks and the inside of the flower looks so different compared to the ones that I've picked earlier today. So I'm really curious about that. It's such a different shape of the flower. for this morning is really similar color to that purple one that we just planted except that it grows kind of like a cone and in the cone it has a bunch of teeny tiny almost little flowers inside of it and what our class noticed last week is that when you pick those flowers you actually um, can squeeze them and there's like this sticky nectar that comes out so we had all sorts of questions about what that could be I can't find it today so I'm gonna keep walking around and looking for that but what I'd like you to do today, when you go on a nice walk, get a break from your indoor classrooms with your families and go outside and explore. I want you to look around and find some signs of spring. Don't forget to record the temperature and the time if you can, because it's really cool to see how things change every day. And just look around, ask some questions, talk about what you see, make some drawings or take some notes. You could add some labels. If you're gonna pick tiny flowers, again, just be super gentle and listen because when you're listening you can notice all kinds of things outside so again just go take a walk think about what you notice that's different now that it is springtime and then go back and take another one we'll see you soon bye bye